Hi there, me again, your friendly neighborhood humble stroke consultor with my co-host, Crash the Wonderbird. So, it's going to do a uh, comments and questions video. So first off, um, I did a video last week about uh, sort of return to work, uh, about stroke, sort of a generalized video. Had an intro and outro, it was a bit of edited video as well. Let me know what you think. I'm not happy with the intro and the outro. It, they don't look to be the same resolution quality. So I'm going to refrain from doing that unless you guys have comments otherwise, but great. So... I'm learning how to vid edit. It's not the easiest thing in the world. So let's just deal with some comments. So three days ago, Aries Dark. Now, Aries Dark, I know you personally. I know how much of a twisted individual you are. Um, you meant you left a comment on one of my videos. Uh, uh, Extreme Games, Dr. Berman, Quackery Update. You said, um, you know, thanks for combing your hair. Well, I'm glad you noticed. You know, yeah, it was about time. It, it took me a while. Dude, I've had a stroke. Come on, leave me alone. Um, over here. Uh, I made I, someone left a thumbs up on a video on post-stroke headache. Yeah, post-stroke headache. It's a thing, right? Um, Isaac Newton, you left me a comment. That you had a headache from your stroke after a year ago and they gave you Tylenol, which doesn't do crap for headaches. You know what? You're right. I, I will eat T1s with codeine like they're candy. They, they, I would probably have to take five or six of them before it have any real effect. And I, that probably is not all that healthy. I have um, medical marijuana. That helps me. But I, have, I live in Canada. It is licensed and prescribed by a doctor, so I'm not violating any laws. I'm not involving myself with ne'er-do-wells. Apparently, you found a piece of paper that you want to chew on. Um, so, that is prescribed by a doctor. I use it in an oil form, and it helps tremendously. Uh, please, before you take anything that I say as advice, I'm not a doctor. I'm simply relating my experiences and experience that you might find through research. Um, and you know, if there's something that you need to know, please consult your clinical team, consult the licensed doctors in your area. And those hairs are attached, my friend. They're attached, meaning they're a part of me. You cannot have them. Um, that being said, if you're going to do anything in relationship to your healthcare, please make sure what you're doing is legal for their jurisdiction you're in. Right? Um, yeah, the, the only thing that I found that helped with my headaches that was over or under the counter was uh, there was like a serious glut in T1s that were available. So I found out they had um, muscle relaxers with codeine in them that were also behind the counter but did not require a prescription but were ridiculously priced. Or I could get a bottle of 20 T1s for like five bucks. These things were like 20 bucks for six or something like that, 20 bucks for 12. Um, they helped, but I'm not sure if that was more of the muscle relaxant than it was the codeine or a combination of the both. But since I've had my CBD and my CBD THC oils, I have not had the same level of difficulty. Like that, those, come here buddy, get up there. Yeah, there we go. Um, those, that drug combination for me has been a godsend, absolute godsend. But again, whatever you're going to do, I'm not a doctor, I've only played one on TV, please can see your clinical team. And then the kings of CBD, um, you left a comment that your dad had a headache, right, uh, for three months, and the hospital's not doing much for him, right? Let's be honest here. And, I, and this is not a slag against the medical community. Once you've had your stroke, neurologically, there's going to be a tipping point where there's nothing they can do for you. What do I mean by that? Well, there's no new medication they can give you. There's no real treatment they can give you they're not planning a surgery the the immediacy and the emergency of the stroke is over they've treated you for the stroke you've survived the stroke and now it's you're going to be released to home or a rehab facility uh, for physio occupational speech and, and the various therapies you're going to need to help get your life back to where it should be right so unfortunately there are limited things the doctors can do I was an eMERGE once after my stroke for a headache. 
because it was a different kind of headache than I wasn't used to. And I had a, I had a headache pretty much steady for three and a half to four months. I still get headaches. Especially when you do that. Yeah, yeah let's, let's do that again and not trigger a headache, shall we? Um, I still get headaches. However, with the medication I use, um, it's not that bad. It, it, it's manageable now, right? Joey Bradford, thank you. Yes, uh, my speech is much better. Um, Crash is right there. He's currently plucking hair. Again, he is available for rent. He's not licensed or insured in any way. Um, and again, as long as it's hair removal on the G-rated portion of your body, he will endeavor to remove it in any other hair he sees fit. Um, speech is better. I still have my struggles from time to time. You may hear it occasionally, and it's, it's going to be a thing for a while. Right? Hopefully not forever, but hopefully just for a while. Isaac Newton. Um, now, if, if I've read your, your comments correctly, you are also a stroke assaulter. So you've also had a stroke. Hopefully yours did not come with a bird that likes to pluck hair. Um, so you think that stroke and depression might have an issue with some of the statins that you could be, because yeah, they, you're right. You automatically, once you've had your stroke, it's like, here's your medication. And they hand you bottles and bottles and bottles. And one of those medications inevitably is probably going to be a statin um, type medication. Uh, I'm gonna do some research about that actually to see if there is a link between statins and depression because it is a possibility are you going to be doofus the entire time so i'm gonna see if that is a possibility there there are some potential that that i haven't considered and i'm, I'm not going to say that i know everything because i know i don't um and i'm not a doctor i've only played one on tv Now, Kings of CBD, you said in here you've also recommended to your dad that he take CBD. Well, I'm in Canada, and marijuana has been legal in the, my country for almost a decade or if not longer. Um, some doctors in Canada still do not believe in the, the effect or the legitimacy of what the various products can do. Now, I'm not gonna get into debating an individual doctor's beliefs and ethics. I'm just gonna say that it's possible that those doctors are holding on to information that maybe they don't have the full picture, right? Because I'll be honest, I, I didn't know what to expect when I got my prescription. I was just hoping if things are gonna be as half as good as I think they might be, this could help my quality of life. What I do know is this, my fatigue level, my anxiety level, um, my headaches, my sleep um, have all been drastically positively impacted by my prescription. Kind of like, you know, me being well shorn is being drastically positively impacted by you, you winged rat. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... And Joy Bradford, yes, thank you for saying that I'm a good man and I'm helping people. I like to think I'm helping at least one other stroke survivor, stroke assaulter out there. Um, and they're, you know, getting benefit out of this. Because I realize that you get a book, at least in Ontario. I'm going to assume it's similar in other provinces and other jurisdictions. I got a book um, from the Sto stroke, Heart and Stroke Association of Canada that was the stroke book. And it helps to a certain extent. It does. And there are going to be places where you don't have support groups. Or in my situation, I'm a member of a support group, but I'll be honest, the vast majority of the membership in the support group, they're not my age. They're not even close to my age. They're 20, 25 years beyond my age. So we share many things in common, that being a stroke, but situationally, like, I, I need it. I want to go back to work. Well, they're all retired. Right? Now, Ashley Stubbings, you also, this goes back to January 26th. 
that you said that you're still finding the post stroke fatigue difficult to cope with and getting your right arm to behave is tricky. Well, unfortunately, it sounds like you were left with some mobility deficits. Um, oh, your full comment was I'm making progress in little ways, like for instance, tying my shoelaces, which I can do now without concentrating too much. What about me? Well, for me, it's not so much a concentration thing for the shoelaces. For me, it's a bend over thing. I, I bend over and I get dizzy. So, and there are days where I might not have the manual dexterity um, to tie my shoes. But you're right. You got to find the little positives. You got to find the little victories, right? Um, there are many things you can do to practice mobility with your hands, with your upper limbs. The key is this. Persistence. Determination. Try again. Right? That That's completely what you've got to practice. Because when you're dealing with things like mobility issues, be it foot drop, be it my fingers don't move well, be it I can't move my arm well, right? you've got to train the brain and the body to like each other again. And it's persistence, determination, and try again. Because you are going to fail over and over and over and over and over and over again. And and those those attempts and failures and attempts and failures and attempts and failures, they could be weeks, they could be months, they could be years, right? And then all of a sudden you can move your fingers, right? And then all of a sudden you can grab a ball. And then all of a sudden you can take the lid off a jar. Right? And then all of a sudden you can, right? So you see how that progresses? You got to celebrate your little victories, your little successes, because I'm going to be honest, if you've been left with major mobility issues, it's not going to just get better. It's not going to be like that. You are going to have to learn toddler skills over again. And that's essentially what it is. The part of your filing cabinet of your brain got tipped over and you haven't been able to put all the files back in order in the right file folder or whatever. You're relearning skills that you had mastered as a toddler. Right? So, and Ashley, I hope you continue to gain the successes you need, and I hope you continue to practice the exercises, what they are, um, and practice them to what you need to do. And I, I hope to hear that you end up having the successes you're looking for. I appreciate that not everyone is going to have the successes that they expect. I appreciate that not everyone's going to have the successes in the timeline that they expect it. Right? Patience is a big thing with this whole stroke world, right? Um, but then again, you need to recognize that what you could do six months ago, what you couldn't do six weeks ago, right? So s seven months ago in a, in a, a week and a half, I had my stroke seven months ago. If you go to the video day one freedom, that's the, that's literally as I got out of the hospital. Um, I recorded that video mainly for friends and family because they didn't, get a chance to see me because they couldn't travel or whatever. I just wanted everyone to know, let them know that I was okay. Right. And then I decided to start this YouTube channel as a, as a blog, a vlog, um, brain with a vlog, vlog with a brain. So when that being said, my speech took about a month to get truly better. Um, I still have moments. My walking, my walking took a couple of months. And that included foot drop. That included stairs, hate them, just didn't want to do stairs. Going up, I was kind of okay. Going down was a nightmare. Um, you know, at three or four stairs, not a big deal. You get like a nice big Victorian staircase. Yeah, forget about it. Um, doing buttons. I couldn't do buttons for the longest time. That's why when you watch a bunch of my earlier videos, uh, that's all t-shirts, right? I can do buttons now. I just choose not to. I'm lazy. So perseverance, termination, try again. You're going to have a lot of almost successes. You're going to have a lot of near misses. You're going to have a lot of oh shit moments. Like, why can't I do that? And that's true of anything after your stroke. That's true of doing up buttons. That's true of, of getting your arm to move. That's true of, you know, getting back to work and getting back into the groove of things. Right? Patience. 
you know, perseverance, determination, try again. And that's the only advice I have. So, Ashley, if things work out for you, please let me know, right? And, you know, let us know what's, what's been the best suggestion you've found, right? Because your physiotherapist, your occupational therapist, they're going to give you exercises that they're familiar with, but I'm also an advocate to find operational fun operationally functional exercises so for example undoing pill bottles uh opening drawers grabbing the right knife grabbing the right fork you know things that you have to do day in day out you can do a lot of rehab in your kitchen right just opening drawers and grabbing the right item right i'm gonna grab the spatula i'm gonna grab the pancake flipper i'm gonna grab the corkscrew right and then you know opening up ziploc bags opening them up um, uh, jars because they all come in different sizes, right? They all come with different size lids, different textured lids. So you, you can get a lot out of your kitchen for physiotherapy. Um, however, whatever you're going to do in your kitchen, if you're going to need to cut things or use machinery, please do it safely. So that's about all I have to say about the comments to videos, uh, questions. Um, and again, if there's something you want to see me cover, please leave a comment down below, right? If you like the edited video with the intro and the outro, leave a comment down below. I was just kind of curious what you guys thought about that. Um, I'm learning how to edit. I'm getting a handle on that. Once I get to a level I, that I like, I'm going to continue with it. Um, and if you want to contact me directly, there's something you want to see me cover, you just want to bounce an idea off me. You want to make sure that you're not the only one going crazy after the stroke, because trust me, you're not. You can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com, right? You can email directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I'll respond to any email, right? Um, if you're looking for some anonymity or some privacy, um, you know, just let me know, hey, don't don't mention my name online or whatever. I'm like, fine, I, I won't. Um, and just keep in mind, if you happen to either yourself are going through a post-stroke journey, someone you know is going through a post-stroke journey, or you're supporting someone going through their post-stroke journey, please like, share, subscribe you might get some benefit out of the channel, right? There might be some content that is assist, can assist you in some way. And then if either you or someone around you, you happen to notice that someone, or even in yourself, some signs or symptoms that think you might be having a stroke or you're watching someone have a stroke, things like someone appears befuddled or confused, right? And they can't keep their balance. All of a sudden they don't know where they are. Or they it looks like they're walking through molasses or they, you know, uh, someone who's having vision problems, they can't see properly in one eye. They can't see properly to both eyes. They can't move their eyes. They only see in grayscale. They only see like a little circle of the world, right? Uh, someone who's got uh, facial droop, you know, one side of their face is drooping. Someone who happens to, uh, not able, not able to, uh, raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who's slurring their speech, stuttering their speech, using inappropriate word usage for situation or context. Someone that can't smile equally effectively at all. Someone that can't maintain their own body weight, right? They can't stand unaided or just general body weakness. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.